All right, so it's no secret that I'm a huge fan of drones in all shapes and sizes. Big, tiny, fast, slow, cinematic. Some of them are shaped as birds. If it flies, I like it. But one of the things that we haven't quite explored much yet are massive drones. So DJI is sponsoring this episode and traveling us out to places to check out massive drones and see what is the purpose of them? How are they useful? They're not designed necessarily for filming like the type of drones we typically do, but since they're massive, that means they are incredibly strong. So our first stop here is Kansas City, which is in what state? Kansas. No, it's actually in Missouri. That's a little confusing, huh? But anyways, we got about a two hour drive from here to get the Agri Spray, and they have some big drones for us to check out. So we are in Boonville, Missouri. Uh, this is uh, Agri Spray Drones headquarters. Uh, I'm the owner of Agri Spray Drones. So we, all, we don't have much time before the thunderstorm comes in, right? No, yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> it's approaching very quickly. Uh, okay. But luckily, the fly cart, you can fly it in the rain. Yeah, I think, what, what is it, IP55? Yeah. Rain, uh, cold, you know, lithium batteries, they don't take to cold very well. So these batteries have heaters in them. Whenever it's below freezing, a drone won't typically take off. I'm sure you've maybe tried to fly, well, yeah. maybe not in California, <laughs> <laughs> but around here we've tried to fly Mavics and it just won't take off. I think typically it's minus 10 degrees Celsius, but I think this was minus 20 degrees Celsius. Yeah. I also heard that there's like a 20 kilogram iron stick or something that they use to clear snow off power lines. So that's an interesting use case because that's not even transporting anything. It's using it as a wrecking ball basically. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and also high elevation too, right? Higher than you'll ever fly. Yeah. <laughs> I'll put it that way. Yeah, I've never seen a reason to fly Whoa. that high. Did that, yeah. do you get that? <laughs> are we gonna get electrocuted? Don't are stand we... underneath that tower. Or we could put these batteries underneath there and it'll charge in a second. That's not a bad <laughs> idea. <laughs> you grab the ropes, I'm gonna grab a fresh battery so you can operate the flight cart with one battery or two batteries. So I guess it's called the flight cart 30 because it's 30 kilogram payload, right? 30 kilogram payload whenever it's two batteries. With one battery, you've got a 40 kilogram payload. Yeah, so that's like 88 pounds or so. so yeah, that roughly 90 pounds pounds with one battery, that's a, uh, a safe lifting weight. For a big drone, it's actually really nimble. Setting it up and flying it, it's not that different from like a Mavic. No, it really isn't. It's like yeah. you fold out the arms, you turn it on, you wait for it to get GPS, and then it takes off. Absolutely. <laughs> you can totally fly it if you want. I'm down. Yeah. <laughs> Do you technically need a specific license? I would be the pilot in command. You have your 107. And so if you're under my supervision, yeah, it would be fine if you if you fly. Mm. But you wouldn't be able to operate this on your own. Right, yes. right, without the waiver. When we do training, it really is designed to make sure that you pay attention 100% and that you plan ahead. This is a good workout too. <sighs> yeah. What do you yeah. think of those batteries? A bit bigger than the Mavic. Huh? Yeah, 52.2 <laughs> volts and 1,984 watt hours per battery. Yeah, you could start your car with that pretty easily. You could drive your car on that. Yeah. <laughs> so two of these batteries on a fly cart means it's flying with four kilowatts of power on board, which is technically enough capacity to get a Tesla Model 3 about 18 miles, which is kind of crazy. And I guess that's why the batteries are pretty heavy, 11 kilograms each. So that also explains why we can lift more weight when we only have one battery, but of course half the batteries means half the capacity. So we can get eight kilometers of range when we're flying 40 kilograms of payload or double that to 16 kilometers of range running two batteries at 30 kilogram payload. And of course, if you don't max out the payload, then you get more range. Next stop, DJI headquarters. That was a pretty long flight, huh? Yeah. Oh, 15 and a half hour flight. Yeah. Now jet lag. <laughs> <laughs> this is a pretty nice. sweet room. Yeah, look at this. Imported beer such as Budweiser. <laughs> yeah, Budweiser is imported here. Okay, so this is the city of Shenzhen. We're gonna go to the DJI building tomorrow. And look who we have with us. Hey, Stuart. Yeah. How you doing? I'm doing good. I'm happy to be back in Shenzhen. This is HQ right here? Yeah, this is it. So you can see two buildings. On the left side is sales and marketing and on the right side is uh, R&D. And this whole building is DJI, huh? These two buildings, yeah, and then there's a little cool bridge, which we'll go to later Ooh, to connect the two. that'd be a great spot to bungee jump off of. <laughs> That's terrifying. <laughs> it's actually pretty windy here, so it's almost a little scary. Oh, 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 actually, scary. I'm, a little, I'm a little bit <laughs> yeah, nervous, it's a little I'm not bit gonna scary, lie. <laughs> pretty unusual to be on such a small bridge this high up. Oh. <laughs> Uh, you guys like flown a drone off of here, like like the FPV drone? Yeah, off some of here? sometime for FPV. Yeah. Also, you can see a block over there. That's where we usually test our drones. You know, the new product. Shenzhen is a very new city, right? Yeah, it's a very new city. It's uh, it's built just like 40 years ago. 
yeah. before 40 years, so you know, everything here is just flat, nothing here. Yeah, nothing I heard yet. it was just like a, a small fishing village with 30,000 people. Right. The first time I came here was like five years ago, and all these tall buildings are empty. Wow. Here. Yes. And also, all the cars here are electric, or a majority of them, it seems like. Yeah. There's a lot of incentives if it's not electric. It's a lottery system and can be kind of difficult. And it's interesting to see how many electric cars there are that I've never heard of. That's be one that does not exist in the United States. I heard BYD just became the top electric car manufacturer for most electric car sales. I've never even heard of this. What, I know. <laughs> so we drove a few hours from Shenzhen to meet up with a crew that basically provides a crane service where you deliver bigger packages onto rooftops that may not be as easily accessible. And I want to say the first thing I noticed is how fast they pull up, set up, do their thing, and then they're ready to go to the next location. It hasn't even been a minute yet and it's already almost ready to go. Should we be wearing hard hats? He has a hard hat. No, no, I think <laughs> there it is. Ooh, there it is. Whoa, man, that's surprisingly quiet. It's like a very low hum. And I'm sure that's one of the important factors. Is there a law here against carrying people with drones? Yeah. <laughs> well, because then it's a manned aircraft at uh -huh. that point. Flight car 30. So this is DJI first drone that is dedicated for delivery. Look at these propellers though. <sighs> There's like two different configurations. The cargo box is a standard package for the flight car 30. Okay. And the winch system is optional accessories. You can just oh, open it okay. very simply. We have this weight detection. You want to maintain that center of gravity, which makes sense. You don't want some motors working way harder than the others. What's the most it's ever lifted? <laughs> of course, we have like to do some tests, but we could see all the eight motors, temperature, and also the rotational speed. But if you lift him more, maybe some damage to the motors, so we do not recommend. Parachute system is also an independent system. That parachute one <laughs> is so tempting. You just wanna... <laughs> when you deploy the parachute, the controller will record the position. Recently, we have done more than 100 times of the test oh, wow. for the parachute. You know, mountain biking is really fun. Except for the part where you have to take it up the hill. Mountain bikers are going to be the number one customers of these now. They're like, what? I don't have to ride it up the hill anymore? <laughs> okay, so the winch itself is 20 meters and it's designed to be able to drop stuff off by touching the ground and it automatically releases. Oh, oh it's released. So right now it's holding on to me because I'm pulling down on it. But as soon as I stop pulling down, it drops yeah. it. But it only does that when the winch is dropped. Yes. It'll never release if the winch is pulled all the way up. Mm -hmm. So how do you pull the winch up? So there are like two ways. Oh, one is okay. to rotate the wheel, another one is on the screen. I mean, this flight car has so many bells and whistles. Like, it has this cable cutting function where if your payload gets stuck in a tree or something, then the winch can basically cut it by basically melting it, which is kind of crazy. And when it comes to obstacle avoidance, it has the vision sensor that we see typically in our drones, but it has redundant systems as well as radar. The benefits of radar is that it could be used day or night fog. Yeah. There's also this adjustable swing control algorithm where the drone will calculate how much the payload underneath it is swinging and do what it needs to to stabilize it. Now the flight car is brand new for DJI, but this isn't their first big drone. They've actually been doing this for a while now, but for different purposes. We're on wheels, baby. We try to make things as easy as possible around. Yeah. So your background is in agriculture. 100%. So I grew up on a dairy farm. I was a seed dealer prior working with farmers. And so I've always been surrounded by ag my entire life. So this is a spray drone. Yeah, you can probably see a lot of similarities between this and the flight Car. More farmers want certain products applied aerially so it doesn't damage the crop or like today, fields are going to be wet here for the next week and you can't drive through muddy fields with a tractor and so you have to have aerial application. The other day I was driving down the highway and I saw this helicopter flying low and fast but I did like an introduction to flying helicopters thing yeah. and they were like you're not supposed to actually fly too low you need to have enough elevation to where you can auto rotate in case of like a engine failure mm -hmm. but when they're spraying crops with helicopters they're flying low and fast. So that's aerial application you might call it crop dusting as well and that's been around for a long time. The helicopter thing is very recent Helicopters get more work done because you can land on the side of the field and refill. Airplanes, they have to fly back to the airport. So you can get more work done with a helicopter, but you also risk your life. We see individuals starting businesses, starting services using spray drones, which is really, really cool because it's created opportunities. So we see individuals in high school in college, buy a drone, get a loan for a drone, start a business, and be able to pay off their entire investment in one season. There's farmers ready to hire you because they don't want to do it themselves. They have too much going on but they would gladly pay you to do it because there's plenty of demand for this service. Sam, we want to start another little side business right now? <laughs> <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> it's seriously, yeah, now's, now's a great time. Yeah.
<laughs> yeah. Camera drones, we're always talking about how long can the drone stay flying for so that we can get our shots. But you seem to talk about it in acres. Uh, the Agris T40 is a 10 and a half gallon drone. Generally, we're going to see an efficiency of about 40 to 50 acres per hour if you're running at full efficiency with the Agris T40. You know how there's that segment, what's in my camera bag? We should do one where it's like, what's in our Pelican? Got the Sony a7S and got the a7 IV right there. Mavic 3 Pro, my go-to for that triple lens right there. We're rocking our tripod right here, putting it through some use and abuse so that way we know what the weak points are. And it's the 360X4 and the Pocket 3, but you wanna know what DJI thing I use the most is? It's not the fancy drones or the fancy cameras. It's actually these mics right here. For the last couple months, I think it's safe to say that a majority of the audio in my videos are from these DJI Mic 2s. And for our workflow, it's actually great because you just slap them on. You don't really have to think about it. It's really good at protection against the wind. It also has 32-bit internal recording now. But this is the new thing right here. This is actually an adapter. Since we shoot a lot on Sony's, basically this is the MI shoe right here. It goes in right here, flips up, and the Mic 2's receiver can actually slide in like that. Check it out. Now it's receiving audio from this microphone wirelessly without any cables which is amazing because it is honestly one of the things that is annoying when you have cables coming out of here and you bang it or set it down on its side because you're in a hurry or whatever it could damage that port omnidirectional mics like this is great because it can capture just like audio within like a bubble like an omnidirectional pattern if i were utilizing a shotgun mic no matter how good it is that pattern would pick me up as well as whatever is behind me so that would have totally blown the audio out crazy giant drones and noise going on around you you could still reliably get pretty good audio. And now we got two of them going up at the same time. So this is a liquid shading agent that goes on top of greenhouses. This gets done every spring. It helps reflect sunlight. Yeah. Because uh, the plants only need a certain amount of UV light in the greenhouse to actually grow correctly throughout the summer. Uh huh. So this helps reflect some of it. They called us two years ago and just asked us if this would even work. How is this traditionally done? By hand, uh, with a hand sprayer. Helicopters on larger greenhouses, if they can get in and do it. Some areas, they actually stand on top of the greenhouse and they'll spray it on one side, turn around, spray it on the other side. Uh, it's dangerous and in some states now illegal. They don't allow people to stand on top of them because they break their legs falling off. Uh, it takes them about two to three days to do it by hand. Uh, this will be done by noon today with the drone. <laughs> So a few hours. Yep, a few hours. This was never heard of before. We just came out here and randomly tried it one day. And now we have dealers that are doing it themselves. My passion is agriculture. When I was younger, we, we did kind of struggle uh -huh. uh, just because prices and labor and everything with uh -huh. the farm. And as new products have come out, new technology, it's helped my family uh, grow in the agriculture world. So being in an area in the industry where I can help other farmers do that, it's, right. that's my passion. Yeah. Farmers usually pretty impressed when they see you uh, paint it the first time. Oh yeah, definitely. Because it's not something that you would actually think of doing right. until you see it. Right, and you actually see that it's faster, cheaper, safer, easier, yeah. safer. They'll do the side panels uh, with the hand wand, so that would be done manually. I wonder if that's the next evolution. So the there, there is a company that has made the attachment where the nozzles will point outwards uh -huh. so you can spray buildings. The next question was, can we clean windows on sides of buildings Oh. or clean houses? It wouldn't be too hard for this to attach a pressure washer on the side of it. I mean, That's exactly what power. it is. So even with these spray drones, you're still figuring out new ways to utilize them. Oh yeah, every single day actually. I mean, we're getting calls from people all around the world that are interested in this technology, but they're bringing what they're wanting to do with it. But we hear new things all the time. This is kind of like an office on wheels. Yeah. Like this contains everything you need to get you through a whole day. In the summertime, we'll have our seats mounted up there. We have the boat canvas up there. You'll flip that up for sunshade. As long as you got enough fuel and water and chemical on hand, you can run dark to dark. <laughs> the way a lot of guys put it, the drone's not in the air. It's not making money. Right. <laughs> this is where we have the battery chargers and the battery cooling stations mounted down at all times. Up here is where we keep the controllers and all the controller batteries charging at all times. How many batteries do you need to keep going? Three batteries per drone you can usually keep pretty consistent. You'll have one in the drone running, one charging, and one on standby. These charge at least just as fast as that depletes. Yep. What we're going to do is go around and outline every bit of the field. You want a good border between your row and especially if there's power lines running along your road. And once you create one of these, you could save them, right? So yeah. if you keep coming back to the same fuel, you could essentially just have it run the same one. Correct. Yep. It's, yeah. sa it's saved in the cloud system. Once you put it in there, it's saved there forever. So as of right now, this is all autonomous. Yes, sir. Uh, hands free. I'm not touching a thing. If you're interested in learning more about this side of the world of drones, definitely go check out AgriSpray Drones. They have in-person classes as well as a YouTube channel. Now we're back in Kansas City in what state? Missouri. No, we're in Kansas.
Kansas City, it's Kansas. Yeah, it can be a little bit confusing because Kansas City is right on the border, so part of it is a Missouri. We're in Kansas right now, but we're about to leave right after we cross this bridge right here, so I almost get to say it. No, don't do it. Oh, oh, we're not in Kansas anymore. Why aren't you laughing? We drove all the way to Kansas for that joke and you didn't even laugh. See what I have to deal with, guys? 